in this structure we are go going to have the main sanctuary that's going to take to accommodate about a thousand people we are going to have two separate halls that will be dedicated towards training and educating the children and uh, when the church is not on we'll be using these two separate halls to train other skills and uh, train the ministers we also have in there the five different offices that will serve as administrative center for all the blessed churches and uh, any other ministry that we will be interested to come and partner together with us. We see the need for the media station whereby we can put the message, the word, the gospel in the air and this administrative center is going to host a studio, a great studio that will be used exactly to propagate the message, to reach out the word to the dying world. So as you stand with us, we are going to realize that the message of the kingdom is going to travel through the airs and reach many, many other lives. I know God is going to give us me i believe let us take a step of faith and move on there is nothing impossible vile tu maandiko tu kwa biblia nothing is impossible through you and us we are going to put up a very beautiful house for the lord and a good parking space everything will be beautiful because whatever we do the bible says that do it with all might. As we invest in building the house of God, we'll be investing for generations to come and even our children. Kwa na imani, tutachenga kanisa. Hile kubwa kabisa. Enye hata hii watu wote wapa Eldoret wata ingia.
tuzungumzie agano because we are the people of the covenant kwa sababu sisi ni watu wa agano I want to write somewhere we are the people of covenant. Nataka kuandike mahali kwamba sisi ni watu wa agano. And I will speak to us what the people of covenant do. Nami nitatuzungumzieni kuhusiana na jinsi ambavyo watu wa agano hufanya. We are the people of the covenant. Sisi ni watu wa agano. And the Bible itself is a covenant. Na Biblia yenyewe ni agano. The agreement between God and us. Mapatano katikati ya Mungu na sisi. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Tunalo agano la kale na agano la sasa, agano jipya. So God is a God of covenant. Basi Mungu ni Mungu wa agano. And uh, today we want to take some time. Leo tunataka kuchukua muda kidogo and see what this covenant really mean to us. Tupate kuona kwamba agano hili linamaanisha nini kwetu. Yeah, maybe we change that, that that title to the people of the covenant. We are the people of the covenant. Mm, tubadilishe tubadilishe hicho kichwa iwe kwamba ni watu sisi ni watu wa agano. We are the people of the covenant. Sisi ni watu wa agano. Remind your neighbor that word we are the people of the covenant. Kumbushe jirani yako neno hilo sisi ni watu wa agano. If you are a woman or a man say I'm a man or a woman of the covenant. Kama wewe ni mwanamume ama mwanamke sema kwamba mimi ni mwanamume wa agano ama mwanamke. This was tell tell your neighbor that uh, that word. Ambia jirani yako neno hilo. I'm a man of covenant. Mimi ni mwanamume wa agano. So when we think about our relationship with God, basi tunapotafakari kuhusiana na uhusiano wetu na Mungu just a relationship usio tu uhusiano but is a, a covenant Lakini relationship ni uhusiano wa kiagano that's why we cannot break our relationship Yet with god hatuwezi tukavunja agano uhusiano wetu na mungu and uh, paul wrote this and said naye paulo akaandika haya akisema what will separate me from the love of god nini kitanitenga na upendo wa mungu he said is it, is it friends akasema je ni marafiki and he said no akasema hapana is it money je ni pesa he said no akasema hapana and said even death will not separate him from god anasema kwamba hata mauti hayatamtenga na upendo wa mungu so a covenant relationship is never broken basi uhusiano wa kiagano hauvunjiki kamwe so the whole bible as we read we should understand it is a covenant document basi biblia yote tunapoisoma tunafaa kuelewa kwamba eh, ya kwamba ni ki, 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 kitabu cha kiagano it is not just written in the form of two testaments or covenants but the spirit of covenant prevails throughout the whole bible haijaandikwa tu kwa hali ya agano mara mbili lakini kwamba roho ya kiagano yaka ama yaishi ndani ya biblia it is not just about the letter the laws the do's haihusiani tu na zile sheria haihusiani tu na yale mambo ya kutenda na kutotenda but the spirit that brings us together binds us together in the love of God. Lakini roho ambayo inatuleta pamoja, inatuunganisha pamoja ndani ya upendo wa Mungu. So what the covenant? Basi agano ni nini? The covenant is a binding relationship. Agano ni uhusiano una uhusiano unaoshikanisha watu. That covenant that is never broken. Yaani ule uhusiano ama ile agano ambalo hauwezi ukavunja. The covenant is a committed relationship between two parties. Yaani agano ni uhusiano wa kujitolea katikati ya watu wawili. One coming from the other side and another coming from the other side Mmoja akitoka upande mwingine side to relate Mwingine anatoka upande mwingine na wao wanaamua kuhusiana And in the Bible we see this uh, this covenant between two parties Na katika Biblia tunaona agano hili kati ya watu wawili Which is God and his people Ambaye ni Mungu na watu wake And the second is between God's own people. Na ya pili ni katikati ya watu wa Mungu. What I mean here is Kila ambacho namaanisha hapa ni God relates with us the Mungu first one. Anahusiana na sisi ile ya kwanza. And then the second one I relate with you. Alafu ya pili mimi nahusiana na wewe. So we see the 
two types of relationship in the Bible. Basi tunaona aina hii mbili ya mahusiano na Between us and God. Kati yetu sisi na Mungu. And between us and us. Na katikati yetu sisi kwa sisi. In the book of 2 Kings 2 verse 4. Katika kitabu cha Wafalme wa pili, mlango wa pili mstari wa 4. And also verse 6. Na tena mstari wa 6. We see the double oath of the scripture here. Tunaona hapa aina mbili ya maandiko hapa. It says as the Lord lives. Anasema kama Bwana aishivyo. In other words, my relationship and God. Yaani kwa maneno mengine, mahusiano yangu na Mungu. And secondly, as your soul lives na between yapili, me and you. Na anasema na roho yako iishivyo katika ya mimi na wewe. I will not leave you. Sitakuacha. So the two parts of relationship basi aina mbili ya mahusiano the first is a commitment between us and god ya kwanza ni mahusiano ama kujitolea katikati yetu sisi na mungu and the second is between us and us na ya pili ni katikati ya sisi kwa sisi sisi wenyewe and in the old testament na katika agano la kale the way the hebrews did covenants namna ambavyo waebrania walifanya maagano The very first thing was to cut a covenant. Jambo la kwanza lilikuwa ni kuikata agano. And how they cut the covenant? Wakakata namna gani agano? They took an animal and they killed an animal and they separated the animal. Wakachukua mnyama na wakamua mnyama kwa kumkata na kum So they signed this agreement in the blood. Basi wakatia sahihi ya mapatano haya kupitia kwa damu. And they ate this covenant. Na kisha wakala agano hili. So they ate that meat that they had cut. Basi ile nyama walio kuwa wameikata wakaila. And I'll be giving us the reasons why this was done. Na mimi nitakupatia ni sababu kwa nini hii ilifanyika hivyo. And that we may understand how this applies to us as Christians. Ili kwamba tupate kufahamu hii inafanyika namna gani kwetu sisi kama wa Kristo. So I invite you to go with me slowly. Basi nakaribisha upatane nami moja kwa moja. That you may understand. Ili kwamba upate kufahamu. Why our relationship with God is a covenant. Kwa nini mahusiano yetu na Mungu ni agano? And no one can break this covenant. Na hakuna ambaye anaweza vunja agano hili. And why this covenant has to extend between us and us as a, as a church family. Na kwa nini ni agano hili lafaa kuendelea kwetu sisi kwa sisi kama familia ya kanisa in in the old testament when, were the, when they were doing the covenant katika agano la kale walipokuwa wanafanya maagano there were six main elements that were involved kulikuwa na vipengee sita muhimu vilivyohusika in this solemn ceremony or assembly katika mkutano huu ama katika sherehe hii ya kipekee and it not only remain with the old testament na hii haikubakia tu katika agano la kale but in Matthew 26 26 to 28 lakini katika kitabu cha Mathayo 26 26 hadi 28 Jesus announced the inauguration of the new covenant or the new testament. Yesu anatangaza uzinduzi wa agano jipya. And he said this, na anasema hivi, that his body and his blood will be involved in this ceremony. Anasema kwamba mwili wake na damu yake itahusika katika sherehe hii. And as they were eating Jesus took bread, na walipokuwa wakila Yesu alitoa mkate, akabariki akaumega, and gave it to the disciples, akawapa wanafunzi and said, wake, akasema, take eat this is my body. Kwaeni mle huu ndio mwili wangu. Then he took the cup and gave thanks. Akakitoa kikombe akashukuru. And, and gave it to them saying, Akawapa akisema, Drink from it. Nyweni nyote katika hichi. All of you. Nyinyi nyote. For this is my blood of the new covenant. Kwa maana hii ndio damu yangu ya agano. Which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Imwagikayo kwa ajili ya wengi kwa ondoleo la dhambi. You see as he did this he was initiating us into the new covenant. Unaona anapofanya hivi alikuwa anatuingiza katika agano jipya. And that's why we are saying we are the people of the covenant. Na hii sababu tunasema kwamba sisi ni watu wa agano. I know the scripture in Matthew 26:26 to 28 is not new 
to you because we do this more often in this church as we partake the holy communion and now let me speak on these six elements so that next time you are, over, uh, you are partaking of the holy communion you will know why you are doing it and you will understand that you are the people of the covenant again remind your neighbor we are the people of the covenant remind another one we are the people of the covenant and then tell another one we are the people of the covenant and remind them you will know today why na wakumbushe leo hii utajua kwa nini amen amen are you ready tuko sawa are you ready tuko sawa now sasa in the old testament we see the covenant katika agano jipya tunaona god with his people agano katikati ya mungu na watu wake we see people and people tunaona maagano kati ya watu kwa watu we see the families and families tunaona katikati ya jamii we see the marriages tunaona katika ndoa the old covenant haya yote ni maagano but what happened lakini nini kinafanyika the first element that was taken agano ya kwanza ambayo inafanyika there was a covenant cut in blood kulikuwa na agano ambalo inafanywa katika damu and this was called a blood covenant na hii iliitwa agano ya damu and then after cutting the covenant in blood na baada ya kuikata agano hii katika damu then there were covenant oaths kisha kukakuwa na zile nadhiri za maagano the blessings and curses were pronounced laana na baraka zikatamkwa uh, in other words the terms of covenant were being established kwa maneno mengine misingi ya maagano haya ilikuwa inawekwa and then there was the exchange of names na basi kukakuwa na kubadilishana majina weapons and robes um, kubadilishana majina silaha na sheria and then And then after this happening there was a common mark or seal. Na kisha baada ya hii kulikuwa na uh, ishara ya agano ama kuweka muhuri. Then there was covenant meal and ceremonial meal. Na kisha kukawa na chakula cha agano ama ch- chakula cha sherehe. Amen. Amen. So let's let's start with the first one. Basi acha tuanze kwa ya kwanza. A covenant which was cut in the blood. Agano iliyo katwa katika damu because you not enter into covenant kwa sababu hautaingia katika agano without the blood basipo damu and you see in this case na unaona katika hali hii when the people sinned and they were coming back to go to make agreement with god watu walipotenda dhambi wakawa wanamrejelea mungu ili kwamba wapate mapatano na mungu they were asked to bring the animals waliulizwa kwamba walete wanyama and the animals were killed wanyama hawa wakauawa and the blood was shed na damu ikamwagwa and the blood was atoned for the people na damu hii ikaweza kufanywa kwa ajili ya watu and people were made one with god na watu wakafanywa kitu kimoja na mungu so the animals were halved into two basi wanyama walikuwa wanakatwa uh, upande kuwili and then the people were forced to pass in the blood there na basi watu wakalazimishwa kupita katika damu pale what were they doing walikuwa wanafanya nini they were signing the infinity walikuwa wanatia muhuri swearing allegiance to one another walikuwa wa, wa, wanatia muhuri kuhusiana na agano hili I'm willing to be one with you wakitoa nadhiri kwamba kwa mmoja kwa mwingine kwamba nakubali kwa kitu kimoja na wewe and on the base of the palms na katika eh, kigaa cha mikono yao they cut walikata the cross in there walikata eh, msalaba pale and there was blood coming out ukawa na damu inatoka and they brought the two tourists together na wakalete viga hivi pamoja viwili mix the blood together ili kwamba wachanganye damu hii pamoja and after holding for few seconds of baada ya kushikilia hivyo kwa masaa machache then they pour this blood i mean they let this blood drop in a, in a glass kisha wakaachilia damu hii ianguke ndani ya glass of wine katika glass ya mvinyo 
and then they exchanged and drank together kisha wakabadilishana na kunywa pamoja what were they symbolizing walikuwa wanaashiria nini they were saying now your blood is my blood walikuwa wanasema sasa damu yako ni damu yangu and my blood is your blood hayo damu yangu ni damu yako and i'm drinking your blood as you drink my blood nami nanywa damu yako unapokunywa yangu and from yangu. today we have become one thing na kuanzia leo tumefanyika kitu kimoja what happened on the cross of jesus christ nini kinafanyika katika msalaba wa yesu christ? Christ took upon himself our sins. Yesu Kristo akachukua dhambi zetu. He died as our sacrifice. Akakufa kama dhambi yetu. He shed that blood on our behalf. Akamwaga ile damu kwa And he declared that his blood has washed us. Na akatangaza kwamba damu yake ni damu. His blood is our blood. Akatangaza kwamba damu yake ni damu yetu. And he declared that we become the people of the blood, Na, the people of Jesus, the people of God. Akatangaza kwamba tumefanyika watu wa damu, tumefanyika watu wa Yesu, watu wa Mungu. And when he was going before he, he gave up his spirit na alipokuwa karibu anaaga he declared akatangaza now all your sins have been forgiven sasa dhambi zenu he looked at the father in heaven akamtazama baba he looked on earth at us ulimwenguni kwetu and he said this was akasema maneno haya father baba forgive them wasamehe why kwa nini because my blood is pure kwa sababu damu yangu and my blood has become the blood damu yangu imefanyika damu yao and he declared it is finished naye akatangaza kwamba imekwisha amen amen now don't understand why we are the people of the covenant sasa unaelewa kwa nini watu wa agano we didn't shed the blood physically sisi wenyewe hatukumwaga damu yetu jesus shed the blood on our behalf yes alimwaga damu kwa niaba yetu His blood sanctified us. Damu yake ikatakasa. He made us his own. Akatufanya sisi kuwa wake. And John reminds us. Na yeye Yohana atukumbusha. Those who received Jesus, those who made the covenant with Jesus. Wale waliompokea Yesu, wale waliofanya agano na Yesu. They were given the power walipewa nguvu to become ya kufanyika the children wana of God wa Mungu Amen Amen I am a man of the covenant Mimi ni mtu wa agano Ayo je wewe Ayo je wewe Hallelujah Hallelujah So this this covenant was signed in the blood. Basi agano hili linatua sahihi katika damu. The blood of Jesus took us into the covenant. Damu ya Yesu ikatupeleka katika agano. Our agreement with God. Makubaliano yetu na Mungu. Was signed in the blood of Jesus. Yalikiwa sahihi kwa damu ya Yesu. It can never be broken. Haiwezi ikavunjika kamwe. Remind your neighbor You are covenant with God was signed in the blood of Jesus. Jirani yako kwamba agano lako na Mungu lilisaidiwa sahihi kwa damu ya Yesu. Remind another one you are covenant with God was signed in the blood of Jesus. Kumbuka mwingine kwamba agano lako na Mungu lilitiwa sahihi kwa damu ya Yesu. No one can break that covenant. Hakuna ambaye aweza akavunja agano hilo. You belong hilo. to God. Wewe ni No amount of accusation. Hakuna can remove you from the love of God. Inaweza ikakuondoa katika upendo wa Mungu. The covenant was signed in the blood of Jesus. Hilo agano lilitiwa hii kwa damu ya Yesu no amount of uh, of blackmailing hakuna aina yoyote can remove you from the love of god ya, ya kupakwa tope it was kondoko, signed in the blood of jesus hakuna hii kwa damu ya Yesu That when someone wants to remove you from god kwamba mtu akitaka kukuondoa kwa Mungu what god looks at kila ambacho Mungu anatazama is not you sio wewe it is that blood ni hiyo damu Jesus Yesu came as a perfect sacrifice Alikuja kama the as that animal that was killed that God may sign that agreement between us and him Kama yule mnyama aliyeuawa ili kwamba Mungu atie sahihi makubaliano katikati yetu sisi na yeye That's why I belong to God Hiyo ndio sababu wewe ni That's why I belong to God Kwa sababu mimi ni wa Mungu Amen 
I may not have anything today. I may not have that fame today. But I will glory in one thing. My covenant with God cannot be broken. Why? Why? It was signed in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So after sharing that blood and signing that, I mean, that covenant in the blood, what happened? Terms of covenant were established. Sasa wakaweka zile sheria za magano. Terms of covenant were established. That formal agreement, whether oral or written, of the promises and obligations that have followed that relationship. And that's why you see <coughs> this Bible is that formal agreement that was written about our covenant with God. Because it was signed. When I'm sick, I go back to the terms of agreement. And I remember the terms of agreement that by my stripes you are healed. And I, I remind God that agreement. When I'm sick, I go back to the agreement. And I remind God of our agreement that I will send my word that heals you. When I feel I'm so broke, I go back to the agreement and remind God the terms of our agreement is that silver and gold they belong to you. When I feel I'm being persecuted by the enemy, I go back to the terms of agreement and I remind God and you say the victory belongs to you and I declare the terms of the agreement. I don't know if someone's getting this. The terms of agreement were written. Others were given orally. And that means those parties entering the covenant in the Bible it was between God and Israel in this grace dispensation is between you as a church and God and in these terms he gave us this word that all that you need you will find here. Amen. Amen. And as that, that happened the names Majina. of the parts entering the covenant were put down they were written. And go to summarize these terms. Na Mungu akatia mtasari ma sheria hizi. He summarized these terms in the word love. Akatia mtasari sheria hizi katika neno upendo. Love for God and upendo love for man. Na upendo kwa mwanadamu. Love the Lord with all your heart, with upendo all your soul, wana, with all your strength. Kwa moyo wako wote, kwa nafsi yako yote na kwa nguvu zako zote. And love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love man. And these terms were to be read, to be read regularly. So that you don't break on this covenant terms. That's why this word is sweet to you. You have to read it every day. It belongs 
the covenant that you need make the bible your friend at your own time read genesis 31 43 to 56 43-56 read exodus 24 3-8 to and read 1 samuel 20 11 to 20 and then the third thing happened they exchanged the names they exchanged the weapons and they exchanged the robes. What does that mean to us days? Names were exchanged when people entered the covenant. Just like in a marriage. When you come, you take on the name of the person that you are coming in agreement to. And now they, they refer you by that person's name. You are not born with that name. But now you have the privilege of being identified with that name. And you see the name represented the repetition. Na unaona jina iliwakilisha marejeleo. It represented the honor. Ikawakilisha heshima and the resources of the person. Na ikawakilisha rasilimali ya yule mtu. If you marry a rich person, kama ukimuoa au ukiolewa katika mtu tajiri, you pick that name and his fame. Unachukua jina lile na ushawishi wake. And people know this guy is very rich. Na watu wanajua kwamba huyu jamaa ni tajiri sana. So when you go you you walk with that name of that rich person. Sasa wewe unapotembea unatembea na jina la huyu tajiri. You walk with his honor. Unatembea na heshima yake. And even his wealth becomes part of you. Na hata utajiri wake unakuwa sehemu yako. And as we read in the book of Genesis chapter 17. Na basi tunaposoma katika kitabu cha mwanzo Specifically verse 1 to 16 Mwanzo 17 mstari wa kwanza hadi 16 we, we see Abraham and Sarah picking on the name of God Tunaona Abraham na Sarai wakichukua majina yote ya Mungu And in this God gives the letter H on their names Na katika hii Mungu anapeana herufi C katika majina yao Which was of his personal name Yahweh ambayo ilikuwa ni jina lake kibinafsi la Yahweh And we see Abraham picking on the new name Abraham Na tunaona Abraham Abraham akichukua jina jipya Abraham. We also see Sarah picking on the name Sarah. Na basi tunamuona tena Sarai akichukua jina Sarah. So they are all picking on the name of God. Basi wote wanalichukua jina la Mungu. That they may pick on the reputation of God. Ili kwamba waweze kuchukua urejeleo wa Mungu. That they may pick on the honor of God. Waweze kuichukua heshima ya Mungu. And the wealth of God. Na utajiri wa Mungu. What does that mean to us? Ina maanisha nini kwetu? In our new covenant with God we picked on the name of God. Katika agano letu jipya that when we are in need of her health we picked on the name of God which means I am the Lord that healeth you when you are in need of peace we picked on the name of the Lord that means I am the Lord that gives you peace and the weapons were also exchanged na pia tena wakabadilishana silaha which was the pledge of protection ambayo ilikuwa ni ni maungamo ya ulinzi a pledge of peace maungano maungamo ya amani and when i was taking your weapon and you are taking my weapon basi mimi ninapochukua silaha yako na wewe unachukua yangu i was simply telling you ilikuwa nakwambia i will never strike you with this weapon because it is yours sitawahi kukupiga kwa silaha hii kwa sababu hii ni yako and no attack will ever come from your friend na hakuna shambulizi lolote litakalokuja kutoka ndani ya rafiki yako and what it means here is that we've picked on the peace of God. Tell your neighbor you've picked on the peace of the Lord. Inquire from him what is troubling him.
Yes, inquire from him what's troubling you. Muulize nini kinakusumbua? Remind him how we are the people of the covenant. Mkumbushe kwamba eh sisi ni watu wa agano. Pick on the weapon Chukua silaha of God ya Mungu which symbolizes peace ambayo inashiria amani and protection. Na ulinzi. May God protect you. Mungu akulinde. May God give you peace. Mungu akupatie amani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also they exchange the robes. Na tena wakabadilishana mavazi. Which symbolized position. Ambayo iliashiria nafasi. The preferring of the other. Kum, yani kumpatia yule mwingine nafasi. A willingness to seek the promotion of the covenant friend. Yani ile kujitolea hiari ya kutafuta kupandishwa cheo cha rafiki wa self sacrifice. Hata kwa kiwango cha wewe mwenyewe kujitolea dhabihu. See in first Samuel 2011 to 17. Hebu tazama katika Samueli wa kwanza and specifically like first Samuel 23:14-18. Samueli wa kwanza 23:14-18. We see the covenant between Saul, I mean between Jonathan and David. Tunaona katikati ya Daudi na Yonathani. Jonathan's father was the king. Babake Yonathani alikuwa ni mfalme. So the apparent heir of this kingdom was Jonathan. Basi mrithi wa moja kwa moja wa ufalme huu alikuwa ni Yonathani. And Jonathan made a In this structure we are go going to have the main sanctuary that is going to take to accommodate about a thousand people we are going to have two separate halls that will be dedicated towards training and educating the children and uh, when the church is not on we'll be using this two separate halls to train other skills and uh, train the ministers we also have in there the five different offices it will serve as an administrative center for all the blessed churches and uh, any other ministry that will be interested to come and partner together with us We see the need for the media station whereby we can put the message the word the gospel in the air and this administrative center is going to host a studio a great studio that will be used exactly to propagate the message to reach out the word to the dying world So as you stand with us we are going to realize that the message of the kingdom is going to travel through the airs and reach many many other lives. I know God is going to give us Me I believe let us take a step of faith and move on. There is nothing impossible. Vile tu maandiko tu kwa Biblia nothing is impossible. Through you and us we are going to put up a very beautiful house for the Lord and a good parking space. Everything will be beautiful because whatever we do the Bible says that do it with all might as we invest in building the house of god we'll be investing for generations to come and even our children kwa na imani tutachenga kanisa eh ile kubwa kabisa yenye hata hii watu wote hapa eldoret wataingia